Alright, welcome back to the channel. We are going to attempt to do some farming today. First thing I've got to do is i got to pull the GPS screen out of this tractor, bring it to the 8400 so we can uh, have auto steer for working ground. So, I'm going to do that real quick. Check out this massive spike I found on the field. The top of it looks like it's been hammered on, and the bottom's pretty pointy. So, I really don't know what it is, but it's solid metal. Pretty cool. Sorry, birds. Birds always pick the most convenient place to build a nest. If we, if we wouldn't have saw that, pretty much guarantee it would have been a fire by the end of the day. So, Sorry birds. So I took the screen out of this tractor. We use it for anhydrous. Um, we don't need it for that anymore. We're gonna put in the 8400. Uh, I'm gonna bring this tractor back towards dad's house. That's where we'll probably start planting again. We don't know how fit the ground is. We're just gonna go out and try it. Um, he's gonna get that 8400 and hook it up to that old field cultivator and scratch around with that since it's light and get some ground opened up. We're thinking some of this ground will have to be worked twice because it's got a lot of stock residue because we planted so late last year. It didn't have time to break down. So we might hit it the first time with that small field cultivator. And if it's fit, we can hit it again with this one before we plant it. go ahead and get started here in this field uh, I really don't know how fit it is hoping that I am pleasantly surprised uh, we had about three to four tenths of rain two days ago and then you know a week before that we had an inch and a half so it was just about starting to get fit before we got that last um, little bit of rain and so I mean it, we're not in terrible shape the ground just looks a little wet we're gonna see if we can open it up um, We've got dark spots, I don't know if you can see it. That's kind of a wet spot right there. I don't know if I'll be able to get through it with this big field cultivator. It's awful heavy. When you get into the wet spots with this big field cultivator, it just likes to sink. So dad might have to open it up a little bit with that small field cultivator, but we'll get started here and see what we got. Just dropped it in the ground here. It's uh, not too bad right here. It's a little bit of a lighter area of the field. We're coming up on a wet spot. If I can get through that, then I should be good for the rest of this field. There's 60 acres right here. There's 37 on the other side of the ditch, and then another 60 next to me. So uh, there's about 160 acres here, right? Yeah, about 160 acres here that if we could get worked, we'd love to get it worked. All right, I spoke too soon, we got water standing. Definitely not gonna be able to get through that. So I'm going around it. We'll see if we can get most of this field worked. I think it'll have to be worked twice anyway. So we might as well do what we can. This ground's working up a little bit better than I thought. It's got some wet spots in it, but that's just the way this farm is. You can see the water standing over there. Obviously, I'm not gonna be able to get through that, but it's a little damp in places, but not terrible. I think we're going to be able to get most of this done. You see up there we've got some rye planted on that sand ridge. We're actually going to square off the sand ridge. The neighbors have some CRP down there. I don't know if you can see that or not, but we're going to square it off of theirs so it's straight through. And uh, we never really grow a crop off this sand ridge anyway. I'll go up here and show it to you. This is the Little Beaver Creek. It's We call it the county ditch. Um, it splits the county. This is Kankakee County over there, Iroquois County over here. So this is the county line. We're right on the border of it. Whenever they dug this ditch, way back when, they dumped all the sand over here on our side. So this does not grow hardly anything for crops. That's why we put this rye on here to hold it from blowing. And we actually ended up last minute deciding to put this into CRP. So the rye, wasn't really necessary but we didn't know it at the time but yeah it'll also 
by putting that CRP in, we'll eliminate about half of that water hole having to farm through that. Uh, there's just nowhere for that water to go, so at least we'll make that spot smaller and we'll only have to farm a little bit of it. There's always water standing there. This farm is pretty poorly drained. It's got water pockets in it. On a normal year, we have to go around at least a couple water holes, so I'm getting as much of it done as I can. Dad's got the 8400 hooked up to that old field elevator. He's over at his house. We actually worked that field twice already. This will be the third time. We worked it and then it rained and we thought we were going to get it planted the next day so we worked it again and then we didn't get it planted and then it rained again. So that's just what happens sometimes. It's another reason I want to get away from conventional tillage. We're always fighting timing of tillage and it's like you try and work it in so you can plant it at a certain time well then you might get rained out or you might decide to go a different direction so then you have to work it again and spend more fuel more maintenance and more cultivator sweeps so strip till no till is the way to go in my opinion hopefully we won't be doing much of this in the years to come dad is just about here with the planter i guess we're going to go ahead and plant this field and maybe one other field today it's uh what time is it about 2 30 uh, looks like this field's in pretty good shape. It should plant decent. And if I know Dad, he's going to want to put some sweet corn in here. So um, I hopped in the tractor. I was going to go work some ground, but I saw him coming. So I figured I'd help him with the sweet corn. This is the field where he lives. And he always likes to put four rows of sweet corn in one of these fields. So he'll probably start with that. <laughs> couple comments asking about Roxy. She's doing good. She's just a little ball of fire, so. So they're interlocking and this one's not working right. Alright, so those row cleaners are definitely an issue and that's not something that we could have seen until we got the planter in the field. So dad's gonna go, we've got some extra spikes that are actually um they were actually closing wheels on the planter when we bought the planter. We took them off and put those furrow cruisers on. Um, we're thinking that they are the same spiked wheel as the row cleaners so basically what we think is those are wore out so the fingers are actually hitting um, because the fingers are shorter so he's gonna try and replace he's got two of them that are messing up on him he's gonna try and replace those and get rolling so I'm gonna go keep working ground uh, he can handle that so also, he's got to get the planter a little more empty before we can do the sweet corn. So, we normally just put like a half a coffee can full or something in about four rows and then plant till it runs out and then top it off with regular corn. So, 
He's got to get the planter just about empty before we can do that sweet corn. So this would be a great time for a commercial break. Check out this drain cover. Isn't that cool? So I want to thank Maori Welding and Repair. We, uh, we had this drain in the shop and as long as I can remember, it's been full of dirt. Well, we decided to dig it out a couple weeks ago. We were just left with a big hole in the concrete. So dad called up local welding shop, Maori Welding and Repair said, we need a drain cover. Gave him the dimensions and Mike came back and said, we made you your drain cover, but we decided to customize it a little bit. He added a little West Farms logo to it. Turned out really cool. That was not expected, so thanks Mike, you did a great job on that. If you're located in the Iroquois County or surrounding areas, look up Maori Welding and Repair for all your welding and repair needs. I'm just finishing up the end rows on this field. Uh, Dad swapped those row cleaners over and it sounds like he's still having trouble with them, so. I'm gonna fold up and go up to the house and see if there's something we can do. Um, hopefully we don't have to put them back to the position they were before because that would be a lot of work and a lot of repetitive work. So we're gonna go see what we can find out anyway. These are the row cleaners that were on it that we're having trouble with. Um, we thought these closing wheels were the same. They're both made by Martin, but they are quite a bit bigger. As you can see. So uh, I guess he put two of those he put two of those closing wheels on, a couple of them, and they worked. The problem is you have to put both of them on and raise the row cleaner up. So I don't know what trouble he's having. He's still planting right now, so maybe he got it worked out, but I'm gonna go over here and see what we've got going on. I don't know if you can see that or not, but that third row in is plowing really bad. That's the rows that he put that uh, closing wheels on, and then he put one over here on row 15. Um, those two are both plowing because those wheels are so much bigger than the actual row cleaner wheels. So we're fighting that right now. I think we might have to put it back the way it was, uh, at least on those two rows, because the rest of them are working fine. So we're gonna go ahead and tear into that real quick. We're thinking that a couple of those brackets for the row cleaners got bent and the wheels are closer together on the two that we're having trouble with. Yeah, I can really see it on this one. So somehow these arms that come down, they got squeezed together. So when these have the right wheels on them and they're interlocked like this, the fingers will hit and then they won't turn. So. We're going to have to move this one back to the offset hole the way it was before and that way we can keep running for now. Well, I think dad wanted a little bit of break from planting for a while. Uh, we got those two row cleaners swapped out and we got them in the offset position and now they're working fine. So we're gonna get this field planted. There's, I don't even know, 25 acres or so in this field. And uh, we got one more field, another 24 acre field that I'd like to get planted tonight. Um, you're never gonna guess, but there's a chance of rain tonight. There is a 75% chance that we will get two tenths of rain. I mean, it's not, enough to hurt anything but I'd rather us not get any rain for a while so hopefully we can run tomorrow if not who knows okay we're loaded up with sweet corn um, okay we got four rows of sweet corn in the planter we are gonna go till it runs out and then top it back off with regular corn now you can see on this monitor maybe one two three and four are planting terribly right now because sweet corn is such a goofy shaped kernel it usually doesn't plant very well, so I need to pay attention to what I'm doing here, but 
Yeah, we're not going to have very good singulation on those four rows because sweet corn seed is so small, but it is what it is. And we just run out. So Dad's going to come down here with the seed tender and then we're going to top those four boxes off and finish the field. Loaded back up and we're gonna finish this field real quick. We only got maybe three, four rounds left. And I just had to go through a nice little mud hole. So I'm hoping it didn't pick up on my gauge wheels too bad. Um, I'll probably get to the end here and check it out, see what I got, but should be all right. Now the monitor is telling me that row four quit planting. We'll go see what that's all about. Sometimes it just reads funny, so we'll see what happens. Row four is definitely not planting. I don't know what the deal is. The little knob that holds the seed plate in came unlocked, so the seed plate wasn't in the way it's supposed to be. I don't know how that happened. Maybe it was because of the sweet corn. If I get the right size wrench, I should be able to fix it. What the heck? Now row one's doing the same thing. All right, that was a little bit annoying and strange because all three out of those four rows we planted sweet corn in did that at pretty much the exact same time. All right. Now we're good. So I'm gonna get to the end here and put some starter in. So when dad put that sweet corn in, he said he turned the plates a little bit by hand just to prime them to make sure they were full of corn. That way when we dropped it in the ground, it would start planting right away. And he's thinking maybe the way he turned them might have knocked those uh, locks or latches or whatever you wanna call them out. And then the seat plate wasn't stuck in there the way it's supposed to be. And it won't plant like that, so. That was weird. We just got refilled on starter, so we'll be good for this field and the next field. Uh, we should have enough corn to finish this. Hopefully the planter keeps working. Um, we've been fighting this thing all day. So, yeah, we're gonna finish this field move on to the next one. So I'm about done editing this video and I just found out that I lost the ending footage of this video which is not a big deal because that was pretty much the end of the video anyway. So I just want to say thank you for watching. If you like what you saw hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and we'll see you on the next one.